what? I was on a roller coaster of emotions that summer. I'm just gonna apply for school and see what happens. I'm just gonna see what happens. I definitely felt like I was in a dilemma. It was a big deal. Hey, this is so and so. Please give me a call back. I'm like, what? What's going on? All I saw when I read that letter was like, you did not get in. Silly, silly girl. Everybody's first thing to say was, is this a joke? Are you kidding? I'm like, no, mom, this is real. This really happened. Hi guys, I'm Sierra and I'm currently a nursing student. I've been documenting my nursing experience and sharing my journey with you guys. In today's video, I wanted to talk about actually how I got to the point that I'm at right now, meaning how I got into nursing school. It was a very long process and by no means was it perfect. I just want to share my story with you guys and be honest and raw and real because I know this is becoming the time where a lot of people start looking into nursing schools and applying and I figured it's the perfect time to share my story because it wasn't perfect. I feel like you see a lot of videos online or you just hear stories about people applying and getting accepted like it was extremely easy and for some people it is but i also want to share with you guys my side of that and my story so i'm going to start from the beginning and just give you guys some context before i discuss applying for schools and all of that initially in high school i was never even considering a career in the healthcare field i didn't really know what i wanted to do and so when i started college i just started taking college classes that i knew would work and benefit me with any major like my englishes and my maths and i did that for a couple years and <laughs> finally my brother decided to go back to school to do nursing and he was signing up for some of the science classes that require labs like your anatomy and physiology your biologies Etc. I was like, what the heck? I'll just I'll take him with you and that's when I first kind of considered Nursing or the healthcare field. I was looking into other things like dental hygienist Ultrasound techs after doing research and talking with a lot of different people I finally decided on nursing just because it is a career that is just so versatile You can do so many different things with your degree You can work at so many different places if you're ever feeling stagnant you know you just have so many options but that's not what this video is about obviously you're interested in nursing if you're watching this video so you know why it is a great career from that point forward i got pretty serious about it so i had taken a lot of college classes prior but there are a lot of different classes that nursing schools require that weren't necessarily something that i had even looked at yet so I think the big thing was is that I had to do six science classes. So I had three A and P's because at my schools we have terms or quarters. So there's four quarters per year where I know some schools do semesters. So we had three A and P's. I had a biology, a microbiology, and then I had a chemistry. And that's where it gets kind of sticky because some schools require chemistry and some schools don't. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So I have those science classes. In the midst of doing those, it's obviously really, really important to strive to get the best grades possible that you can for many different reasons. And I'm going to tell you why right now. So something that I highly, highly recommend you to do is to apply for as many nursing schools that you can, that is reasonable with your life that you can make the drive you could move to this place because it's only going to work in your benefit where i live it is super super competitive and i'm kind of a hypocrite saying that because i actually only applied for one school but i got really lucky my first piece of advice when you are looking at nursing schools you need to apply for as many as you can it's competitive for various reasons and it's only like i said going to benefit you Something that's super important to do too is that each school has different requirements. So for example, some of the schools where I live require chemistry or require a certain computer class or require other classes that I can't think of right now off the top of my head, but do you see what I'm saying? Some I know require letters of recommendations. There's a lot of different things that you have to do. So you want to make sure you're aware of each school's requirements before your application process so you can turn in the best possible application you can turn in to help you stand out. A big thing where I live, I'm not sure if other schools are like this, but I know a lot of them are that are on the west coast, which is where I live. 
is they work off of a point based system so when you apply you reach a certain amount of points and once you hit that threshold you can then move on to the second process of the nursing program and that could be an interview or an essay it could be a couple different things so upon application the point based system varies again from school to school and I do feel like most of them are similar. A big thing is your grades. You're gonna turn in your accumulative GPA for all of the classes you've taken in college and then your nursing GPA. So just the classes that are gonna count towards your nursing degree. They're gonna look at that. Another thing when I was telling you, you really have to strive to get the best grades possible, obviously, is it's really hard because every program again is different and your GPA is super relevant, but then some programs actually use it against you if you retake a class. So I retook an anatomy and physiology class. I know other people have retaken classes just to get a better grade to boost their GPA, but some programs actually minus points for a retake in a class. So you get all these points, you got a lot of points because your GPA is high, you get points because you volunteered, but then you look at the, if you've retaken a class, minus four. And it really doesn't help you. It's important to look at every school's criteria and just try to get the best grades that you can. Nobody's perfect. Like I said, I retook an anatomy class and those classes weren't easy. It was really hard for me. I almost feel like they were harder than some of my nursing classes. Okay, you know what? Actually, it, that's like a different, it's a different level of difficulty, so. Don't take my word on that. Another huge thing is those classes that are difficult, they are setting the foundation for your nursing school experience because you're walking into nursing school and they're expecting you to already know all this information because they're just going to build on top of it when you take pathophysiology. So it's really important to do well because you're actually learning the information because everything is just gonna grow on top of that. And it's just really important to pay attention to those classes because this is gonna be your career and you wanna be as knowledgeable as you can as a nurse. So after GPA and all of that is taken into account, there are some other things that are as well. I know one of them is being a veteran. So being in the military prior, you get a couple points for that. Like I said, every school is kind of different on how they add the points up. A big thing is if you have volunteered in the past, especially volunteering at any healthcare facility, you volunteer for a certain amount of hours and you can receive a certain amount of points. Another one I know is my school specifically had this and it was leadership. I didn't see this on a lot of schools, but if you had some sort of leadership position in the past, you got a couple points. I'm not exactly sure what all it entailed. I was a manager at a previous job, and so I used that and it worked for me. Um, another one is being fluent in a second language. So whether that be like Spanish, sign language, French, anything like that, I know it's obviously super beneficial. What else? Oh, yes. Having a prior degree can work in your benefit as well. You can get more points for that. And then the big one is having healthcare experience. So what they mean by this is having hours at a job that was in the healthcare field, meaning you have been an MA, a medical assistant, a CNA, which is a certified nursing assistant. I know it has different names elsewhere. It could be like a nurse's aide. I'm not sure, that's all I know. Um, an ENT, an ER tech, numerous jobs, but having that patient care experience, I believe if you had like over 500 hours at my school, you got five points. It was a big deal. Every point matters. As you know, when you're doing your prerequisites for nursing, every point in that class matters because that could be the difference between an A and a B or you passing and failing. So bringing myself back to sitting in lab in my microbiology class with my brother, I definitely felt like I was in a dilemma. I've only worked service industry jobs since I've been an adult like a barista, I worked at a tap house, I've been a server, because where I live, that's kind of what was helping me make the most money to help pay for college, because I was paying out of pocket for everything. So I knew at the time before I applied how important having a healthcare job was, but it also frustrated me personally, because 
to go get a job in the healthcare field, which is, this is so completely wrong, but some of the jobs, a lot of them at the time, this was several years ago, paid less than what my serving positions paid. So I was working full-time as a barista and a server. I'm gonna make more money doing what I'm doing now than going and getting a position as a CNA. And it was tough because, you know, I had rent, I had a car payment, other bills, and it just didn't make sense for me then. And I also didn't understand at the time why it was so important for nursing schools, but I totally, totally do now. It's so, so beneficial if you've been a CNA because, oh my gosh, the beginning of it is going to be a piece of cake for you. It's just going to be a refresher on what you did as a job. Also, side note, where I live, I know... Every hospital has different policies. You can be a CNA at a nursing home. At the time, I was interested in being a CNA at the hospital and getting a better feel for what I was interested in, what I was putting myself into if I was going to get into nursing school. Hospitals where I live require a certification. It's like a state licensed certification. So you can't just go get a job as a CNA and work at the hospital. You actually have to take a course. So it's a program. There's a couple where I live, but they fill up fast, the seating is limited, and with COVID, I know that made things more difficult as well. I'm going to get more into that. To be a CNA at the hospital, you have to actually get your CNA 2 here, which is another program after that. It's time consuming, it costs money, it's obviously worth it, but at the time, I was like, I'm just going to apply for school and see what happens. I'm just going to see what happens. There are a couple schools that are close to me. They're all really competitive. I'm meaning they accept 20 people and get hundreds and hundreds of applicants. So I didn't apply for them, even though I would never tell you to do something like that. Don't get discouraged. You have absolutely no idea what the future holds and what could happen. You don't know if they're going to be opening more positions, having more clinical instructors, so then they have more room for more students. Just apply. Just do it. Don't be like me. So I only applied for one school, and this is because I knew the school accepted more students. I guess in my head, I just thought I might have a better shot of getting into this school because I don't have that healthcare experience. That's so vital that so many people have when they start nursing school. Again, this is where I live. It's because it's so competitive. There are so many people applying for schools, not a lot of schools, and not a lot of instructors because people do make more money being an actual RN than they do teaching. That's why a lot of them that do teach still work at the hospital. So it's just limited and it's competitive and I'm not saying that to discourage you. I'm just, I'm saying that to be real. So I applied for one school. Another thing was, I guess at the time, I was like, I'm not gonna go pay all these application fees when I felt like truly I wasn't gonna get accepted because I didn't have that healthcare experience. So I applied for one school it was a little bit of a process. You have to pay an application fee. You have to get all of your transcripts sent over. You have to fill out several different pieces of paperwork and then you have to wait. <laughs> so you wait, you wait. It's just like a little waiting game and you know there's gonna be a date where you find out if you've made it to the second round. So I'm anxiously waiting and I got an email and I actually made it to the second round, meaning I got to move on to the essay portion. So out of all the applicants, they narrowed it down to, I don't even remember, 100? And 100 of us moved on to the essay portion. And this consisted of going to my school campus, going to the computer lab, and getting two writing prompts. And we had 60 minutes. God, it feels like so long ago, even though it really wasn't. I don't remember how long we had, but we had a time restraint and we had to write two different essays on two different topics and print it off and put it in our folder and then away we went. That whole day was a blur because I, it was so, so nerve wracking. You're in this room with a bunch of people and it feels like it's a competition and it's just, it's really intimidating and scary. But like I said, every school does things differently. Some schools might not even have a second round. You may just apply and you get in. I know another school here locally doesn't do an essay, they do an interview. So you're sitting with a panel of people answering questions. 
I don't know which one I would have preferred. They're both scary to me because when you are doing your essay, it's hard because I know I can go in and edit things and make it better. So I always want to go in and edit my essay because I feel like oh, I can make it more perfect, but then I'm looking at the clock and I have a certain amount of time. But if you're in an interview, it's just, they ask you the question, you answer it, you don't get to take it back. I almost feel like I probably would have preferred that to be honest with you. But anyways, that's not the point. So I moved on to the second round. I did my essay. I, I just the drive home, I was like, I have no idea how I did on that. I don't even really remember what the questions were, but I just remember being really confused by the process because speaking to other people that have been in this program, they only had one writing prompt and then they just had to write a 500 word essay on that, but we actually got two. And then it said, write a 500 word essay. And so I wasn't sure if it was 500 words per question or 500 words in total. And every little detail is obviously gonna matter when they're looking at this application to make sure that you can follow direction. So I was just staring at my computer screen. Everybody's typing away and I'm like, I wanna ask, but I don't. And I asked the man that was in the room that was overseeing things and he didn't seem too sure of himself and yeah like 20 minutes later everybody got told to stop they explained the directions a little bit more thoroughly and then we actually got extra time at the end since they weren't extremely clear <laughs> so yeah it wasn't the smoothest process but it went okay it happened so the next following weeks i was just waiting again it was another waiting game and I just remember feeling just anxious often because you put so much time and energy and money towards all of your prerequisites that have to be done, which take anywhere from a year and a half to three years. I mean, even shorter or longer, depending on where you're at in your life and your other obligations and responsibilities. You feel like you have so much on the line and this is what you want so badly. So it's just nerve-wracking i knew along with other people the day did we know the day actually we knew the time frame of when we were supposed to find out if we got accepted or not and they were sending a letter in the mail so i was checking the mail really often but that's actually not how i found out i found out through an email i remember i was at my sister's old house and she was asking me about it, you know, because I'm still working my jobs patiently waiting i don't have any more classes to take so there's nothing I can really do, I just have to wait. And I go out to leave, I get in my car, and I open my email, and I actually got told I did not get accepted. So, that was heart-wrenching. Oh my gosh, I started crying, I walked my way back into my sister's house told her i think she thought that i was kidding that's a problem with my family is like we all play so many pranks on each other that when something not so good actually happens everybody's first thing to say was is this a joke are you kidding i'm like no mom this is real this really happened so i go and i talk to my sister i have a moment i think i facetimed my brother and that was that i basically chose to look at it as okay there is nothing i can do about the situation i did the best i could with the essay i finished all my classes i got the best grades that i could and i know what i need to do now i know i need to go get some healthcare experience because i really feel like that is the only thing that is hindering me on my application and i don't think at the time i had any volunteering that i put on there so that was another thing unfortunately another thing where i live is that we only have applications once a year i know some places they start nursing programs in the fall and then in the winter or spring so you have more opportunity but here, if you don't get in, you have to wait another year. And that's the thing that was the most upsetting at the moment is because I just didn't want to wait another year. After a little bit of time, I accepted it and I told myself, I know what I need to do. I'm not going to be discouraged and go try to do something else. This is what I want to do. I, I know I can do it. I know I can accomplish it. And so I signed up for a CNA program. The hard thing about that was, you know, I had 
bills i was working two jobs so i had to kind of change some things around i had a little bit of money saved prior and i went down to like part part time on my jobs for the cna program you had to sign up in advance and finally when i was able to start it's monday through friday eight to five for an entire month so it really is like a chunk of time but it's because you learn you learn a lot and then you get a couple weeks of experience at the end in nursing facilities where you get real patient contact so it is a big chunk of time i think they had other options where you could do it on the weekends for like two months every saturday and sunday but they were like 12 hour days and committing every weekend in my summer i was just like i i can't do that cannot do that so this was around may june signed up for my cna course and kind of found out in the midst of it that once i graduate from that cna course i can't go work at the hospital i have to then take a state board test pass it wait for my license to show up on the internet and then sign up for a cna2 course and finish and complete that course and then i can apply for a position at the hospital so it was this big process cost money like a couple thousand dollars and it's a commitment i knew what i needed to do and i was happy to do it and i try to go on it with a positive mindset and accept the situation that i was in even though i just did not want to wait another year i was so anxious and i was really hoping i would get in but i didn't so i'm in the cna course and we're learning about all this fun stuff so you begin learning how to ambulate patients change a bedpan change sheets transfer patients all of the basic things that you learn as a nurse that you need to know how to do because even though you're designating a lot of it to your cna you may not always have a cna there to help you and you want to help your cna as much as you can and how are you going to be able to help them if you don't even know how to do what they're doing you see what i'm saying so i started this course everything was going well I was able to juggle it with work and I met a lot of really amazing people in that program and I'm about halfway through it and I remember I I got a call I think in that morning but my phone was off they were really big about that and I was on my lunch and I saw I had a missed call on a voicemail from a phone number and it was the area code that the school I applied for is in. I was like, huh, this is interesting. I listened to my voicemail and it's like, hey, this is so and so, please give me a call back. I'm like, what? What's going on? My first thought, I just like went to a negative place. Don't ask me why, that's not good. But I was just like, what? Did I do something wrong? Like, what's happening? Called them back on my lunch and over the phone basically i found out i got offered a position in the nursing program i was like what and so let me explain what happens so wow i was so ecstatic like wow everything truly does work out one way or the other it may not be how you necessarily plan it out and envisioned it and manifested it but you will get what you want in this life if you work hard for it and you are positive and you truly believe like i said since it's so competitive here so many people apply for different programs and so what happens is they accept a certain amount of people but maybe these people get accepted into multiple and then they choose the one that they want to go to most and so then spots open up and so that's exactly what happened i'm assuming people applied for my nursing school got accepted into a school that's maybe closer to where they live and then that made room for other spots to open up so apparently i was on a like waiting list i don't know they don't even tell you that because they don't want to give you this false hope but ultimately in the letter that stated that i got rejected from the program it did say something about being on a waiting list i don't i don't know i was just really confused all i saw when i read that letter was like you did not get in but it did say something about keep in mind you could get called up to a week before the program starts that you could get brought into it so that actually can happen where people can get brought into a program a week before it starts because last minute somebody had to back out due to you know different reasons different things and circumstances that are going on in their life so i hope that nonsense made sense 
I got into the program and I was like, what? I kept it a secret for a couple days because I just felt like it wasn't real. Like it didn't happen. So I had to return back to my CNA class after my lunch and I was just like in shock and I ended up finishing my CNA program, but I didn't end up going and getting my license because I had a month before school started, two months before school started, and I figured I would work as much as I could with my other jobs to save as much money as I could. So I finished off the CNA program, finally told my family, broke the news to them. Everybody was really happy. I was really happy and I almost feel like because of the way it happened It just made me appreciate it so much more like it made the victory so much sweeter of getting in because I thought I was gonna have to wait another year and I just lived with that thought and so it was such a beautiful Surprise, I don't know. So I had two months before I got into the program and then I finally started school and I met some other students where the same thing happened to them. And you know what? It's just interesting how it works because there's somebody I know, I'm not gonna say any names, but this person was in the same situation as me, found out they got in over the summer because spots had opened up and this person got the highest score one of the highest scores on one of our HESI exams, like a really high score. So I guess what I'm saying is, I know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you're in the application process and things don't always work out right in this moment and it feels frustrating and heartbreaking, don't let that get to you and make you feel like you're not worth it. You're not smart enough. You're not going to be a good nurse because it's just not true. There are so many different variables in place. People know people. There's just a lot going on and I don't ever want somebody to feel discouraged when they have been so in love with the idea of nursing and wanting to help people that just because it can be so difficult to get into a program, it scares them or because they get rejected, they don't try again. If you really want to do something, you, you should do it, especially if you have the heart to take care of other people when we are what is needed most right now. So I wanted to share my experience with you guys. It was not linear. <laughs> you know, it had its bumps. It went up and down. I was on a roller coaster of emotions that summer. This is just a reminder that things will always work out perfectly. You just have to stay positive and be true to yourself. Listen to your gut. Have a great support system and just remember that you are not alone in things that you go through. There are other people that are struggling on exams, struggling with their prerequisites, struggling to get an A, struggling to get into nursing school. You're, you're not alone. We all face our own battles and yeah, again, you're never alone. And I just want to reiterate that a lot because I think I felt that way sometimes. And then I'm like, God, silly, silly girl. It just wasn't true. So that wraps up my video and me talking so, so much. Oh my gosh, shut up, right? Yeah, I know. I hope my story that I shared with you guys shed some insight on applying for schools. If you guys have any more questions for me, please comment them down below. I'm happy to answer. If you want me to share a more in-depth video about the application process and where I'm at and what it's like, I'd love to make a video like that too. And Again, thank you guys so, so much for watching, for all of your kind words, your support. I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. And even though summer is coming to an end, fall is here and fall is a good time. So I just want to say I love you guys. Thank you. And Camper wants to come say hi. Okay, we're going to say hi to him. Come here. He is a big boy now. Okay. He is not a little puppy anymore. He's a big big boy. This is my camper. See how big he is, you guys? This is the love of my life. You wanna say hi? <laughs> He's like, lady, let me go to sleep. Thank you guys again for watching so much, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Can you blow it on my kissy? <laughs>